Greetings, this is Mark Anderson from Kellogg Community College, and in part two of our video here to explain binomial expansion, we're actually not going to talk about binomial expansion that much, um, because what we're going to have to learn as kind of a side project here is the idea of something called factorial, and also to tie into something called a combination. Now, um, the reason why we're going to learn about this factorial is because in the previous video we had something called Pascal's Triangle. And Pascal's Triangle works very well for very low powers of um, the binomial expansion. So if you're taking a plus b to the third, fourth, or fifth power. And it also works really, really well if you have uh, coefficients of 1 in front of your a and b. But what's unfortunate is that um, when you go into very, very high levels of, in fact, or when you go to very high levels of binomial expansion, you're going to need something that cuts to the chase just a little bit quicker. So first of all, I have to teach you about something called factorial. So um, the idea of factorial is actually choosing items, all of them, in a specific order. Um, and what we would do is to give this idea, like imagine if you had a music group that, or a singer, or you know, any kind of any kind of band that had five albums, and your job was to pick from those five albums your favorite five in order. Well, the first thing you would do is you'd have to choose from the five albums your favorite. Now that means there would be five to choose from. Um, you would then have to pick another. Um, you'd have to pick another album from the remaining four and that means there would have been 20 ways to choose those two items. Um, well, if you've picked two, now you only have three left. So now you have 60 ways to choose the top three albums out of five. And then from there you'd have two choices left, so there is now 120 ways you could have done this. And then multiplying that by one, there's your 120. So five factorial is 120 ways to pick five items in order. Um, or if you've seen uh, me how I did this, I started with the number and then multiplied by each successive number under it until I got to 1. So n factorial is starting off with n and then multiplying by n minus 1 and then n minus 2 until you get to a point where you're down to the integer 1. And then you stop. So 7 factorial is the same as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And multiplying all those together gives you 5,040. And because I teach to statistics, I like to kind of put on my statistics hat every one, you know, to kind of say that this would be taking, if you were given a, a chance to win a fabulous prize by picking seven items in order, maybe from highest to lowest or lowest to highest price, Doing it correctly, if just choosing completely at random and not any kind of like, um, you know, prior knowledge of, of of how much things cost in this game show, um, it would there would be an uh, a chance of winning in one in five thousand forty. So it's not actually that um, likely if you're randomly guessing. Um, the three strikes game. Oh, sorry, that's not the game. 10 chances, there we go. The 10 chances game from the Price is Right um, comes to mind where you have prices in the, you have numbers that are in the price of the object and you have to put them in order. So it's pick, picking all the numbers in order. So it can get pretty difficult if you had a seven digit price that you had to pick. Luckily, um, none of the prices in the Price is Right were that complex. Now, one factorial is interesting because it's just one and one itself is just one. Now, zero factorial. Um, what you might want to do is you might want to kind of guess, like, what is zero factorial? But it just so happens that I have a graphing calculator here, and I can actually type that in. Because I think one of the gut reactions is that zero factorial is, in fact, zero, but it's not. Because um, let me turn on the calculator here and type in zero, and click on the math key. And you'll notice that one of the options is probability. And you'll note that the option number four is the factorial. Zero factorial is, in fact, one. Zero factorial is not zero. Zero factorial is one. And what's powerful about that is that it just gives you the logical idea like, hey, I don't want you to grab anything. And the number of outcomes you have for grabbing nothing is in fact one because you're, that's the only outcome. You get nothing. 
Now what we're about to do is we're about to evaluate these problems here, the seven factorial divided by three factorial and four factorial. And I'm not gonna tell you exactly why we're doing it, but I'd like you to just see a couple different ways to solve this. Now one way is to just write everything out, seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. All right, so that's the numerator, and the denominator is gonna be three factorial, or three times two times one, and the four factorial is gonna be four times three times two times one. All right, now what's great about all of these multiplication problems here is, I mean, yeah, I could just type this all in, but what's the fun in that? Let's do some simplification by using what you might call canceling. I call it simplifying because four divided by four is one over one. Three divided by three is one over one, two divided by two is one over one, and one divided by one is one over one. Now we have three divided by, if, if we multiply the three times two together, we get six, and six divided by six is also one. 7 times 5 times all these 1's is 35, and a denominator full of 1's is just 1 itself, and 35 divided by 1 is 35. Now, I want you to hold on to this idea for just a moment, this 35, because we also could do this on the calculator. If we go to our graphing calculator and type in 7 factorial, or 7 math probability 4, I can then divide it by, and here's the kicker, parentheses, 3 math probability four times four math probability four. You need to do the denominator in parentheses or else the calculator will think that the four factorial is in the numerator, which it isn't. And this will give you the 35 that you were looking for. Now I'm gonna move the calculator over here and we're gonna look at this problem. And uh, the 12 factorial, I'm Instead of writing 12 all the way through 1, look how I write it this time. 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. See, I could have went all the way to 1, but 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 7 factorial. But you'll note that I'm not going to write out my 7 factorial here. But I will write out my 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Because now the 7 factorial simplify and I can pick a pair down here that makes a number up here, so five and two make 10, and four times three make 12. So now what I have left is I have 11 times nine times eight, times all the ones in the numerator, which is gonna be 792, and all the ones in the denominator are gonna be equal one. So 792 divided by one is 792. So, this is all fine and good, and, and I can actually go back to the calculator here and type in 12 factorial divided by 7 factorial times 5 factorial. But there's even a faster way. And the faster way is by knowing something called a combination. Now the combination formula is this n over r. Now to put on again my statistical hat, the n represents the total number of items and the R represents how many choices you get to pick. So these are the number of picks. So for example, if we have seven items and have to choose four of them, we can then use the formula for the combination, which is N factorial divided by N minus R factorial times R factorial, and R factorial is the number of picks. So N factorial divided by N minus R factorial times R factorial. So this would be seven factorial divided by seven minus four, three factorial times four factorial. And this would be 12 factorial divided by seven minus five, seven factorial times five factorial. And now you've seen that, wow, we did these already. There's a faster way. If you have a graphing calculator, I want to point you back to the probability menu because you may have seen that um, on our way to get to factorial, you might have seen um, this NCR, which is talking about this N and R of our combination formula. The N is the total number of items, and R is the ability to pick them, or how many we wanna pick. So we gotta get to a clear screen, and we gotta type in our first number, seven. That's the total number of items. Then we'll go math, then we'll go to probability, and then go to NCR, this combination, 
and we're going to pick these four items. And that gives us an answer of 35. Wow, that was even faster than typing seven factorial divided by three factorial and four factorial. In fact, I'm gonna be using in videos later than this one that talk about binomial expansion, I'll be using this combination formula. So tell, uh, I have 12 here, math going to probability, whoops, <laughs> sorry, math going to probability, and then to NCR, and then typing in five. And I should, if everything has been working so far, get 792, which I do. And this brings us to the very end of our video without one more little bit of commentary. Did you know that we've been using the word combination incorrectly? Yeah, you should check out the Webster's di <laughs> Dictionary definition for combination. A combination is a series of numbers taken without order. But now what have we been calling those things in the middle school that you put your stuff in and keeps it safe between your classes? Well, those are called lockers, right? And those lockers are combination lockers. But the definition of combination is numbers taken without order, whereas we know that when we do a locker combination, we have to put the numbers directly in order. They were usually three numbers and you had to spin the lock once in one direction, once in the other, and once back to the final destination. Well, we always called those locker combinations, but they really should have been called locker permutations. A permutation is a series of numbers taken in order. And this is important because when you play the lotto or a lottery and the ping pong balls fall out of the hopper, it's a combination. You're not really caring about the order, you just care that at the end of the spilling of ping pong balls, your numbers matches theirs. Or in a game of Keno, maybe, that you've played at a bar or tavern. That Keno game is a combination, because as the numbers get put on the screen, you didn't really bet on what order they came out in, you just care about what numbers they are. So. I'm not sure I'm gonna actually start a revolution here and changing the way that we commonly use a mathematical word, but it really should have been locker permutation and not locker combination. Well, thanks for sticking through that two minute rant. Thank you again for watching and part three of the binomial expansion is gonna be coming at you. Stay tuned.